All right, let's talk about layer masking. Um, if you are already familiar with um, Photoshop's tool set, then this will be too much of an introductory to layer masking to uh, hold your attention. So you, you probably won't get much out of this. However, if you're new to Photoshop and you're not familiar with the tools and the workflow within Photoshop, then this will be perfect for you. Um, because layer masking is probably one of the most powerful techniques and concepts within Photoshop. And once you understand layer masking, you, you, you're able to kind of see the, the unlimited potential of what you can do with your designs and your photography um, and all your imagery. Um, so that said, um, I want to get straight into this and um, kind of do a visual walkthrough of what layer masking is because I think that's probably the best way to learn. Um, at least it is for me. So. Um, so what I want to do is, as you can see over here, I have two layers in this particular scene. I have guy pointing, and below guy pointing, I have man listening to guy pointing. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to take man listening to guy pointing, and I want to move that actor into the guy pointing scene or layer so that they are both in the same scene, and it has the appearance that both were shot um, in the same photograph. Um, now, just to... Uh, fill you in on something. I um, intentionally uh, gave myself an advantage um, for this particular effect um, when I took, when I did the, um, um, the shots themselves with the camera. So one of the things I did was I used a fixed location, um, meaning that the camera was on a tripod in a fixed spot um, and it wouldn't move. And that way all of my background elements wouldn't have, to, I wouldn't have to go back in and adjust things, um, the details of the scene. Um, the other thing I did was I shot the two images within one minute of each other um, and that way all the light coming in from the window and the various areas within the scene would still be consistent. They wouldn't have changed much. Um, and then thirdly, as you can see, I made sure the actors weren't too close. And that way if there, there would be no overlaps between them that I would have to go in and touch up in the end. Um, to get a final product, and, and primarily that was just because I wanted to, um, A, the scene didn't call for it, and then B, I wanted to keep this simple so that I could get the concept across without having to um, mix other types of techniques and, and, and things um, with this tutorial. So, that said, let's um, look explore a couple of different ways to bring the man listening to guy pointing into the above layers scene. So, one way you can do this and one way maybe you have done it or seen it done is with the eraser tool. So, um, with the eraser tool, what you could do to get the effect is I could come, take the eraser tool and come right over here and basically just erase the image data on this layer in this area. Right? So, I'm just basically destructively um, erasing the data on this layer in this spot. And if you look over here, you can see that, right? There you go. So you can see that I've just basically cut it out. And that works, it's effective, it does what I need it to do, but here's the downside of it. Let's say I went on and did other things in this image, in, the, in this scene. So I went in and I corrected um, something with this photograph up here, I brought out some additional things, or I blurred it. Um, or I added something to the bookshelf, whatever. I do a lot of other things that I really, really like. And at the end of this process, I decide, you know what? This guy over here, this this uh, duplicate actor in the scene, that was kind of a dumb idea, and I don't want I don't want him in there anymore. Now, the only way I can get him back out is to basically control Z all the way back over these things that I did here and liked to get him out of there. And then I'd have to go back and redo those things. Well, that's not a very good use of, of your time, um, and it's certainly not effective. So the alternative to doing that, and I'm going to back out here real quick to get where we started. So the alternative to doing that and getting the same effect without it being destructive to the layer is to use layer masks. And so what I'm going to do to start my layer mask is I'm going to make sure that I'm clicked on the top layer. I'm going to come down here and click the Add Layer Mask icon. And you can see right here it creates this white thumbnail next to my um, image thumbnail. And with layer masking, you need to be concerned with two colors in particular. Um, I'm sorry, three colors, but I'm going to cover two in particular, black and white. The third color is gray. And just to keep this simple and get the concept across, I'm not going to deal with gray because black and white are the two main colors you need to be concerned with um, with regard to understanding layer mask as a concept. 
So, as you can see right now, the layer mask is completely white. And what that means is that everything on this layer will still show through um, as it did before I added the layer mask. Now, what's different is, is if I select my brush tool, and I make sure that black is selected as my foreground color, so that's my brush color, and now I start to click where I want that actor to appear from the below layer, he'll start to show up. And the reason he shows up is because wherever I paint black in the scene on that top layer in the layer mask, it will hide the image data and expose what's below it. So the same type of effect as I got with the brush tool, but the difference is, is it's not destructive. So as you can see over here up in the layer mask, you can see where I painted black. And that's the area of the image in that layer that's being hidden and exposing the lower layer. Okay? Now, <clears throat> equally I could use this black color to erase other things in this scene. For example, this person, this actor. So he's gone now. Right? And all it's doing is exposing the image data below, which is basically almost the entire image. You can see up here I've everything. And equally I could switch this back to white and um, and uh, just go in here and paint him back out without being destructive to, to the layer. So had I gone on and done other things, all I would have to do is just come back and paint white over him within that layer mask and he'd disappear back out of the scene. I wouldn't have to redo these other things that I had done. So that's the basic um, concept of, of layer masking and um, and how it's used. I want to make sure this is completely erased. Okay. And again, if I were to paint him back in, I would get the final effect that I was kind of going for in the first place. So kind of repeating that step. Um, but anyway, so it's in the scene. It looks seamless. Um, for the most part, the lighting's consistent. Um, they look, you know, both actors look like they were um, they were present when the photograph was taken. Um, though clearly it's an effect, um, or they're twins, I suppose. Um, and that's basically how it's used. So some other ways that designers and photographers use layer masking, um, for example, would be if you took a color photograph and you put the color photograph on the um, bottom layer, and then took a black and white version of that photograph and put it on the top layer. Often, what people will do is um, they will then go in and layer mask the black and white um, photograph, and they will paint. Um, they will paint with their brush black on areas that they want to highlight with color. So, like maybe the lips or the eyes or some other unique feature within the scene that they just want that in color with the rest of it black and white. And it kind of gives a nice visual um, and, and, and is artistic. So, there's a, a lot of ways you can use layer masks. Certainly, play play around with them, get used to them and how they work and the concept and um, you can do some really cool things.